Now, historically, yeah, air, which is the bit that I like to talk about, the establishment doesn't want to talk about because air... The, again, we talk about evidence base here. Um, historically, there has been no real evidence base promoted for air as a vector for the transmission of disease. However, when we look at some of the posters that are around now and some of these posters that were issued, what, 1940, 41, 42, that sort of environment, we say quite clearly, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. We know that. We're told that from the minute we sit on our mother's knee through to the, the day that we actually shuffle off the mortal coil. It's, it's just one of those accepted facts, yeah? And when we look at the, 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 the poster campaign that's being run at the moment um, that shows the aerosolisation, we've got this nice green cloud of droplet nuclei that's coming out of somebody's nasal passage or through the, the, the mouth, and, and we're telling them to catch it, bin it, and kill it, and, and all the, the good messaging that's coming out there. To date, I've not seen Kleenex produce a tissue that is of at least HEPA, or if not ULPA standards. I mean, we sneeze at, what, 80, 150 miles an hour, and we're, we're expecting a, a, a tissue, a piece of paper, that is not a, a HEPA filter to do that job, yeah? There are some disparate arguments that are being promoted at the moment with regards to uh, air as a vector. I mean, let's face it, we've just gone through the world's first pandemic. Um, Swine flu, which, let's give it a name, yeah? Uh, it was another seasonal flu. It just happened to be given a name this time around. But because of the nature of the world, the, the world is changing. We're now in a global village. There was a, a piece of, uh, of work done, and I can't remember who did it now, but the figures actually said that somewhere in the region of 60% of the global population can get anywhere on the world's surface within 24 hours. Now, that means that you guys are going to be dealing with diseases and infections that we've not seen in the UK for a long time, or ever. But these, the spread of that disease is so rapid now that we've got to be looking at dealing with it. And it, it's just something that we, we've got to work with. Yeah? The, the issue of sneezing in swine flu, the issue of um, air as a vector, well, yes, uh, apparently, according to uh, the Department of Health, you can uh, become infected with influenza so long as you are within close personal contact. Now, that was defined as within two feet. Now, let's go back to this sneezing at between 80 and 150 miles an hour. I mean, it doesn't, if I sneeze now, it doesn't just stop here and fall out and you guys are all safe sat over there. Um, because as we know from the annual advert, uh, advert that's run for... Uh, promoting the, the use of the, the vaccine for, for influenza. We have some guy at the back of a bus sneeze and we have somebody at the front of the bus come down with the ailment. Now, that's not because the, the bacteria or the virus actually runs down the length of the bus, climbs up the trouser leg and, and then gets into the nasal cavity. It's because we're talking about aerosol, droplet nuclei. And after two feet, yeah, the, the Department of Health, the CDC and all these good bodies that are out there actually say that, okay, so you're sat, what, six feet, seven feet away from me now. If you were to duck out the way of, and, and I was sneezing at you, all that droplet nuclei they'll accept would land on the chair and then it becomes a contact issue. But you can't breathe it in and become infected through a, a direct route of, of airborne transmission. So there, there are a lot of disparate uh, arguments here. One of the things that we all accept or that you all accept in healthcare is that we use things like laminar flow systems in, in operating theatres, in orthopaedic suites. Um, now, is that because we're looking at surgical site infections through, uh, say, a, a particulate uh, ending up in, the, in the, the surgical site and then getting granulation and cell growth and, and all those bad things that can happen there? Or is it because that particulate carries bacteria and you get an infection? So... If we accept that we need laminar flow systems in orthopaedic suites, why is that the only area in healthcare that we have issues with airborne infection? Why, when somebody presents with TB, do we now start looking at, again, isolation? I mean, TB was uh, eradicated in the UK, but we now know that we've got Y and J strain coming back in, and it's something that we have to deal with, so we isolate. With C. diff, we see some very successful outcomes uh, of management with using cohort nursing suites. Um, again, is that because we're isolating everyone just to give them the same treatment or because we need to manage the environment? And again, it comes back to the built environment and the environment that we're looking to control.